if, if I jump in and, and kind of throw something else that there's a whole mix of thoughts that come out of all of this, but um, often when I am uh, teaching youth, as I said this last week, um, we'll talk about um, having, we talked about having a firm foundation, very similar to a VBS uh, this, this year. And <clears throat> I said, when you have that firm foundation that's built on Jesus Christ, that's built on your relationship with the Lord, when the bad times come, not not if, it's when they come, your your foundation is is firm. And Jesus teaches that lesson himself and says that when the storms come and the house that's built on the rock, it stands and it's still there and it's it's firm. And that is that is kind of my approach to it is we have to be ready and not just preach that life's just going to be ooey gooey happiness forever once you get saved because it's not you're you're going to have problems you, you you might go bankrupt you might lose your job you, you know your your kids might die you might get sick all these things can happen and death and sickness and all that sadness is guaranteed to happen in our lives there's no promise that we're just going to be sp- spared from any of it and so i i kind of teach it as that way as being prepared for it and then at the same time um i think back to the story of job that that joe was talking about and um, we talk about whether is God the one that sends the storm or does it just happen out of nature? Yes and yes. I, I think <laughs> both of those answers are correct. Does Satan do things? Yes. I, I think all three of those things happen. I think sometimes we give Satan too much credit for our fail- failures. Yeah. But um, I look at Job's response, and I'm trying not to be super long on this, but I look at Job's response. Early on, um, he says, naked I came into this world and naked I'll go. Uh, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Um, and he says, uh, though you slay me, I'll, I'll praise you. Like he uses all these phrases. And who's he talking to? He's talking to God. And the truth is God's not doing any of that. God's not responsible for any of the bad things that have happened. Granted, he, he allowed Satan to have that influence and allowed the bad things to happen. But God didn't go, okay, now I'll, now I'll kill his family. God watched that happen, and Job still looks at God as though he's causing it. And I, I don't, I don't know if that's there's a lesson there for us to not blame God for everything that happens. But I think Job's heart response there is very, very good, and and better than mine probably would be for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like I should share this, but it, I was reading in. Uh, Matthew this morning and I got stuck on the part where Jesus called Simon, Simon Bar Jonah. And I thought, what does Simon Bar Jonah mean? And I went to look it up and uh, it basically means son of its dad. Uh, but, but it also deeper meaning is that all of that together, his dad was known as an alcoholic and 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 uh, something and I think Simon means like a reed blowing in the wind. So it was like saying uh, you were an unstable son of a of an alcoholic, and then right after that, he renames him Peter, which means rock. And he's and he does that because Peter said, "I know that you are the Christ, and I have faith in you." And he praises him for his faith, and he says, "You were wavering, and now you're firm like a rock." So I, when you're talking about the foundation, that just popped in my head. So I wanted to share. It. Well, I think I think this <clears throat> I think this whole discussion is much more complex because of the prosperity gospel. And I hate even calling it the prosperity gospel. I don't think it's a version of the gospel, so therefore I hate calling it the prosperity gospel. But um, only in that do we tell people, get saved and bad things won't happen anymore. Get saved and God will take away all your suffering. Get saved and, and all through the scripture, it's get saved and abandon this world and lay down your life for the gospel and go over to Afghanistan and our brothers and sisters in Christ, the invitation is come give your life and exchange it for the cross yeah. because you're gonna your family's gonna ignore you. Your 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 inheritance is gonna be taken away. The the gospel invitation in most of the world is lay it all down for salvation. Only in America do we say get saved and get it all. And which to me, really, because then when that's the invitation and I get saved and then bad things happen, I go, hey, wait a minute. That's not what I was promised. Where's my rose garden? Where's my four leaf clover? Where's my rabbit's foot? Mm-hmm. And we, the church, has went, we can make the gospel more sellable 
by telling people all the good that's going to come with it. But what we've done is made it less believable because the outside lost world looks in at the gospel and says, look, they said that this was going to make them bulletproof, and they're not. Therefore, the mm -hmm. gospel is a lie. And so I think we've actually created this discussion of how does bad thing happen to good people? Why does bad evil even exist? I think we've created this by implying or even outright saying, well, God will save you from all bad things. And, and I would I would jump on that. My my typically one of my favorite examples to always look at for anything is Jesus and the disciples, because I think that's a great relationship that we can look at to learn so much about discipleship, about how we should teach each other, the things that we should say. And Christ uh, tells them that they will be persecuted for his name. He says those things will happen. And then you think about the story of the disciples. None of them that John, I know of. John's the only one that isn't martyred for his faith. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like I don't think any of them have what you would consider to be the American dream of the life, where they <laughs> where they lived it out. They made a, a good amount of money. They saved up for retirement, and then they just rode off into the sunset until they died of old age in happiness next to their spouse in bed one day, and that was their story. And so I think we shouldn't look at that as discouraging, but we should look that at that was as encouragement so that when we suffer it's not a sign that something's wrong or that God's displeased with us it might be a sign that we're doing exactly what we need to be doing and that's that's part of the self-evaluation that we've talked about in the past too so yeah. if the world is rewarding you you're probably serving the world instead of the Savior <laughs>